Revernauts, Chief Engineer Rever, and I am back again, and once again looking down at the glorious and wonderful Reverstan Space Agency Complex. We are doing quite well, and when we last left, we had launched a relay satellite, we'll call it, right? For the for lack of anything else, we could take a look. Maybe each time we can keep track so we don't forget what we did a couple days or, or whatever ago. So we have Puncher 5. That is our manned spacecraft who, with two people in it, one tourist and Radomir. And they are going around for 72 hours. They've only been at it for 58 minutes. So they've got quite a while to go before they're done. And then we also put our low, uh, low orbit satellite. There he is with the relay capability of looking over towards the moon and that way any vehicles ugh, vehicles that are heading out there. Now the problem we're going to have is they're not going to it's not going to cover everything, right? Because what if this is behind the earth, the Kerbal, the earth when when we are sending something out there, we won't have a signal. So I was thinking again, even though it'll cost us money, I think it's going to benefit us to get another satellite like this. Let me zoom in best I can. Get another satellite like this on the opposite side. So that means we're going to have to time the launch a little bit. And we might even have to do some orbital maneuvering, which I think will be interesting for those of you who haven't played KSP before. So let's just, without further ado, go ahead and we are going to load up the Orbsat 1, low Orbsat 1. And, you know, again, we don't have any more parts. I don't think that there's anything we should do to this. Everything seemed to go pretty well, right? So I think we should just launch it and see what happens. <laughs> um, you know, yeah, it really, I, let's just go. How's that sound? I'm just not going to waste any time. We're going to get this guy up. Now, one of the things we may need to do is fast forward a little time. And we can make some adjustments once we're in orbit, but let's see how well we can get as far as being close goes. So I'm going to go right over to the map mode and see where we're at. We're here, and this guy's spinning around this way, right? If we were to launch this now, it would be a little bit harder to get him ahead of this guy. So we can learn launch in a lower orbit than he is and we will go faster but i think we're better off letting this guy pass a decent ways and then launching it so let's uh i don't think we have anything else that's going on that'll hurt us so let's uh fast forward some time and just let this guy here like get past us right he's out at 200 yeah, we, you know, I just want him to be closer to the opposite side. Maybe a little bit, you know, if we take a look, like we're right here, you know, and I would like him to be, say, like here. Maybe even a little bit ahead of us. Because it will be pretty easy because he's at 200 to position further ahead. We can slow down or speed up pretty easily. It gets hard to outpace ships that are real low because you have to be in a lower orbit to go faster even though you're going slower your orbital period is slower so in other words you go around the planet faster does that make sense so this guy who's traveling at 2200 will catch up to this guy who's traveling at 2100 And the real reason he's going to catch up is because of his orbital speed, a period. Like he's, you know, if you see, he's catching up. But look at all those connections. All right. Well, let's go a little faster than that. <laughs> there you go. That, that's a nice clip, right? Oh, and another thing I did, because it's always dark, it seems like when I'm recording, maybe it's just one of those... You know, you notice how many red lights you hit on your way to work. You don't notice the green lights as much. Okay, we're getting close. Yeah, a little bit ahead of... Okay, there we go. All right, so now we are going to launch, you know, now. And then we're going to try to put this guy almost directly opposite the other one. 
All right, so now let's go yeah, back to this one. We, we can't do SAS, so let's get this open. We're going to do this. So we're going to have to manually just make sure it gets up in the air. Let's get it full throttle, but we're going to check here. We have 1.65, so let's let's knock this down to say like a little over two thirds, and then uh, yeah, let's launch them. All right, so far so good. Now remember, when we get far enough away, we're going to lose our connection here. Probably could extend this antenna, but I don't. I'm get them off a little bit. Definitely want to be on the 90 this time. Yeah, there's a few things I can talk to you guys about that I think are scientifically spat slash space interesting. Oh, and somebody has a website. This is completely off the subject, kind of. Though it is about space. There's a... Uh, I, should, I should have had it up. There's a website that somebody made that's like the entire Apollo 11 mission. Like in real time so you can fast forward and slow it down but that was 50 years ago believe it or not and and they put the whole thing up there so that you know so that people can enjoy it and it is pretty cool to like hear all the transmissions and you know you could zoom in on boring stuff that you wouldn't normally ever hear in the news or anything yeah so we're get rid of that let's start turning a little more not, not too much till we get Let's just try to get that ball right on the 92. Oh, things are going bad. Try not to overreact. But then again, you got to react quickly enough in the right direction, right? It's, it's, it's a touchy thing in life. So we're going to cut this out. Hopefully, when we get, you know, up to 90 or 100. There you go. Now we jump. That, that's once that mathematics happens in the game. There, definitely pretty safe to burn at 90 here. Yeah, our apoplepsis is getting kind of far out in front of us. All right, I'm going to cut that off. Let's go over to our map view real quick. Let's make a node. Add a maneuver. Where are we at? 13, a little more. There you go, close enough. We're in an orbit. Now, how does it look this way? I'm going to burn up a little bit, just to level that out slightly. I don't know the actual inclination of our other one, but this is fine. So let's uh, come over here, execute. So this guy needs to get moved over there in time. Looks like he will. We have 48 seconds and it's moving pretty good. Yeah, I forgot to hit our pro grade there. I just I flew it up a little further than I intended, but now let's do this. Let's go back to here and now that we're out of all things, I want to I want to click on There you go. Activate that antenna. Extend all the solar panels. Might as well activate these. Oops, now you're in the way. Perfect. Good. Now we're in the dark. Oh, by the way, I turned up the brightness. So, so even though it's night out, we can now see things, which, you know, in some ways is less realistic, but yeah, at least at least you guys will be able to see on the YouTube videos. So this this is nighttime. Um, I hopefully we'll be able to tell the daytime's not too bright. Not that we have to worry about the daytime that much, right? All right. So once we're in this maneuver, we should be in pretty good shape. How much delta V do we have left on our vessel? Stage four has. Yeah, we're just gonna have a tiny bit less, like less than a hundred. So the next maneuver, we're gonna have to get rid of this. Good. That's that's exactly kind of what we want, right? Oh, so where are we at? 77 and 104. A little off from what we planned, but that's okay. So let's come over to our apoapsis. 
and start him at a maneuver, right? And then we want it to go out to, what is this other guy at? Like one, 200, right? Might as well try to get it to, yeah, 200,000, almost exactly. At least right now he is. Oops. Yeah, so let's extend this. Oops. 250. I'm looking down in the bottom right there. Down to close enough, and then we could do a little fine tuning with this. Oop, way too much. I don't know what I did there. All right, you know what? We're just going to click. Yeah, let's just shoot right for 200. There you go. Close enough. All right, so let's tell this guy to execute. And then I would like to show you something. Let's come over here to this other vessel, right? Now, are we exactly opposite? No. So what we might want to do is we want to try to adjust our... We're, we're going faster than he is. So I want to see where we end up by the time we get to here, right? Because see this orbital period? The orbital period of this one is a lot less. I don't know if you can see that guy down there, but... And because he's less, it, it's sort of a, you know, like that's why we're speeding up. So anyway, let's set low orbit as target, right? And this will give you an idea. Like when we hit here, right, this guy's going to be at this point here. So we're still not quite exactly halfway, if we can kind of see. See what I mean? We're So this is where he's going to be. Now what we can do is, um, let's... Yeah, let's close the alarm. Let's just get into this. What we can do is, like, when we go to burn our periapsis, we can just be a little bit slower, if that makes sense. And we could actually jump over to him. Yeah, so let's, yeah, let's let that get down to where it's pointing at the blue, and then we'll just fast forward, like, ten times. So see, because we're in a lower orbit at this point, he's we're we're catching up to him, right? But we're not going to quite catch up enough. We could probably even there we go. Almost went too fast with my fast forwarding, which which you don't want to do. All right, so where are we at? So our what happened there? Oh oh oh, staging. All right, well, 199, I can live with that. All right, very good. So now, let's go back to the map view. And what I want to do real quick, and we got time. I, I think it'll take us your know, time to, this is our new Apple app, so this is out there now. 17 minutes, so we got 17 minutes. So we can switch to this guy, All right, and we could take a look at his orbital period. His orbital period is 39 minutes and 54 seconds. So really we can call that for guessing purposes, which you'll see in a minute, 40 seconds. So let's go back and yeah, now we're going to switch back to this guy. Oh, the other thing we need to do, let's do this. Come over here to, oh, go back to the map view, come to information, double click on this, and we're going to change this to two. Low orb sat two. Accept the change. There we go. So now we know which one is which. Not that it matters too much, but yeah, it, it at least we'll know that there's a difference. Okay, so now... What I want to estimate is the entire <clears throat> excuse me, the entire trip around here is going to take 40 minutes, right? And if, if we're going to be here when we get to this apoapsis or pretty close to it, right? How much percentage of the 360 degree circle is this? 
you know, I would say that's, you know, if you were looking at clock, it's like the number one position, right? Like one o'clock. So in other words, we need to take off like, and there's 12 hour hands on the, on the clock, right? Like one twelfth, which is what, like nine, 10%. So like if we were to be able to speed up by four minutes, I think that that will get us right. Does that make sense? Or stay faster than him by four minutes. It's going to be my guess because that's about 10%. You know, it'll get us close. We don't have to be exactly on the other side. So here's where I say all of that. And yes, it's kind of complicated, but what we want to do is burn when we get to our apoplasis, right? But when we want to leave like two minutes different or, or four minute difference in our time. See how we have, well, we're right about, we're right about right now, but yeah, you know what that is? I don't even know if we want to burn there because see, when we go around, we're going to get around back to this point and be four minutes ahead of him. Does that make sense? Yeah, I don't think we want to change it. See, because he's going around, it's taking him 40 minutes and it's taking us 36 minutes. I think we're going to catch up just about the right amount of time if we don't burn this next time out. So let's let's watch what happens, right? Because see, he's right now we have a lot of speeding up, but we're speeding up past him a good amount. And I think that another loop around will put us almost exactly opposite him. So let's watch what happens. I hope any of that made some sense, truthfully. <laughs> yeah, see how we're here. See, we'll, let's slow down when we get to the apoplasis, right? See how much we're making up speed? Now when we're, let's go slow again. When we're here and he's there, right? He's going the same speed as us through this whole stretch. So we're not going to speed up that much. We want to go around one more time. You know what? To be safe. Uh, yeah, yeah, that does. Uh, you know what? I should trust the math, even if I'm wrong. We can always slow back down a little bit and let him catch up. Right? Yeah. Or are we really more like a 5% difference on this thing? No, 12, yeah, 12 goes into, yeah, you know, let's just cut, let's speed up a little bit. Let's speed up, so we're, we're going to do a burn move, maneuver here. And even if it takes us twice going around, that's okay. Yeah, we're going to add a maneuver. We're going to just take our period. I'm looking at the period down there. Oops, up to 38. And that'll just slow us down a little. Close enough, right? Let's let's get this guy. Yep, good. So he's going to hold this position. And then in another minute or less, because I'm going to sp speed it up a bit. Speed it up 10 times. So he's going to burn. And then so like every... Yeah, because to me, it seems like maybe I'm overestimating by saying four minutes. There might be something wrong with my logic there. Well, the logic's fine. The, there might be something wrong with my math, right? Because that's not 10% of the whole thing. That's probably more like 5% we were behind them. All right, so anyway. Let's, let's let this guy burn, and then we'll... All right, there we go. So we got a little bit bigger periapsis. And what I want to do is let this guy go around again. And we'll do it at 50 times. And we should be getting more and more closer. Well, right now, we're see how we're not really making any distance? But once we dip down here, we'll be speeding up relative to him. And then do we end up on the exact opposite side or should we have kept it the way it was like I should have trusted myself? We're certainly on the opposite side, right? No, nah, we're not quite. We probably could have left it. Let's let's slow it down. 
Yeah, see, like the opposite side would be like right here. So yeah, I say we go around again. Because we're not going to do much catching up right now. So let's just speed it up, let it... So I would have been right by doing the 10% thing. But that's okay. Sometimes being cautious is not the worst thing you can be in life. Right, but let's pause it just to make sure. Not pause it, but slow it down. Yeah, the opposite side, we want to be a little bit further ahead. No doubt. Okay. I just wanted to make sure when we actually got to this point. And what that does for us is it should give us good coverage. Now, remember, if you guys watched the last episode, we set this to be active. And look how his cone is pointing towards us, even though it's kind of dumb that it is, right? Because he's always going to be on the opposite side. Like, he'll never see us. If this satellite's ever the active vehicle, then him pointing at the active vehicle will never help. <laughs> see, there we go. See, so now we're getting caught up to the other side there. Close enough. We're definitely going to be close enough. All right, so let's uh, let's slow things down for a second. And I want to come in here, and then we want to take what we're really looking to do now. What, what was, uh, we really should have written down the exact, well, we got four minutes. Um, we need to, I should have written that down. I, I, yeah, switch to this guy real quick. What was it? 39 minutes and Go to maneuver mode, 39.54, right? Because we don't want the, we want, it, it matters less that you have the same exact orbit than it does what your orbital period is. Like if you don't want the two of them catching up with each other, they should take the same amount of time to go around. To some degree, it doesn't matter whether one's loop is a little bit different. As long as they take this, it's like two race cars can go around the racetrack on a different line, and they, but they both have the same speed. They'll not catch up with each other. Maybe that's a good analogy. All right, so let's uh, go back to here, switch back to Orbiter 2. There we go. Now let's go back to here, and we're going to come up to our apolapsis right there. We're going to add a maneuver, and we're going to try to take this maneuver until we have 39 minutes and let's let's just do it this way now yeah we could probably pull on this guy there you go click click there you go so that's that's awful close so see how this guy's apolapsis is a little bit higher and the periapsis is a little bit lower let's let's get this guy going to where he needs to go oh he's already on it well, good. That makes it easy. So let's hit execute. I'd like to open this up just to make sure it took and I didn't miss the button or anything. And I'm not going to, well, yeah, let's, let's warp, but it's going to stop us. <laughs> and then, okay. And we'll warp again just till we get down. It's only going to be a 0.9 second burn. And we'll wait till we get down to about 20 seconds or so. That'll just give the game a little time to slow down and get set up. Yeah, see that other guy, we can do two different things here. Let's let this burn happen and see how well it goes. Yep, well, we got the right, you know, 39 minutes and 54 seconds, so... You know, these guys should stay, and now are they on the opposite sides? Pretty close. This guy might have might have gone a little bit further ahead, right? But close for what I wanted it to do, right? So now, let's head back into yeah, this mode. Let's go back over to here, make sure everything's happy. Now, what I want to do is set one of these to... Oh, let's Let's go back to the map mode. Actually, click on this. A little easier to do it from here. We want to set one of these to the active vessel. And then how far away is Minmus? Minmus is 46. So, th so these, these relay satellites wouldn't get us to Minmus, right? Because they only do 20 million and this is 46 million. So what we want to do is we can also have this guy, which makes sense too, targeting the moon, right? 
So now if you look, they're both targeting the moon and we've kind of got double coverage now because they're, see what I mean? They're both in line of sight of the moon. If we come over here, we should be able to see it. Let's close that. There it is. So like, but when one of them goes behind, the other one should be in front. Does that make sense? Now, another thing I'd like to point out, while we have that other vehicle targeted, right? We have this rendezvous thing. And if you're placing these satellites, notice that the relative inclination is 1.2. Now, if we come over to the orbit, we could see our own inclination is 0.84. So our two satellites are not perfectly in line with the equator, and they're also not perfectly in line with each other. So we could, you know, is that a lot? I don't know. This is all just like a beginner setup. I'm sure we're going to, once we have more money, get a better remote tech setup to be able to reach things like Minmus and whatnot. But at least this gets us to where we should never go out of coverage you know in the area of curb and it didn't cost us all that much so anyway let's go uh let's get out of here how's that sound let's hit escape and go back to the space center there we go and we are back we didn't get any science for that but now if we go to our tracking center, maybe this will give us a ooh, lots of stuff. Well, will give us an idea. So see, we can see where we're attached to, which and we can see that we now have coverage if we wanted to do the moon flyby, and, and it should be relatively steady coverage. Now, one of the problems we're going to have is if we go behind the moon, the moon, we're not going to have coverage behind the moon, right? But that's just you would have to have like another satellite that's on the opposite side talking to these satellites but that's okay we'll uh we'll get there eventually and you know maybe we can even put something in a bigger bigger loop you know but that that's all for future consideration so there we go this is when you see other players doing three and four satellites further out i think they're doing it like i said mostly because you know they want to communicate with one station now we have many stations so i don't think that's an issue for us around the equator so if you have that other option check there you go okay so now let's get something oh well, that was getting something done but we haven't we talked about making more money and and now we're going backwards right so what i would like to do oh you know what i came in there for a reason to let's go back to the tracking station there's one of the things up here that it'll do, it'll show you the active waypoints, offered waypoints. So like we can uncheck this. See all those waypoints disappeared there? Yeah, sometimes it crashes my game when I do that. But see those waypoints? But we can also do active orbits, right? So this would, well, we couldn't see anything. And offered orbits. And it didn't change. It should be changing. I don't know why, but anyway, these are the two offered orbits. <laughs> this one is, you know, where we can hover over here and it says the junkyard. But I think what I would like to do, and when you think about it, if we could add another satellite that was going around like this, that would communicate with these guys, then we could have like coverage from this all the time. And, and it would also be a good little experiment for us with our remote tech. I think we could launch pretty close to the same satellite we've been launching. And I mean, this one is, is fine, but it's also a bigger orbit. So I don't necessarily want to get into that just because it's, you know, it might be harder for us to do with this vessel and, the, you know, because you might need more fuel to get all the way out there. Now, our vessels have a good amount of fuel, but let's see how much fuel it takes to get into this orbit before we worry about it. Now, one of the things that's going to come up here and yeah, look, we're right. It's actually a good time to look at this. Let's, yeah, I'm gonna, yeah, I don't know what's going on in those waypoints. It would be nice if they actually went on and off, but this is the space center here. We're gonna have to actually launch when the space center is in line with this. And it is almost in line with it right now, right? We'll just, we're gonna wait till it gets around the other side.
rather than you know waste time, we're gonna wait till it gets around the other side, or or just try to hurry up too much. I don't want to. I'd rather just wait. There's not that much of a hurry. So now, if we were to launch from this side, where it's more or less at now, see it's over here, we would have to launch and go to the north. So what we're going to do is we're going to accept this mission, get all set up on the launch pad, and then we're going to launch from this side, which means when we launch, we're going to have to go to the south or the 180 on our nav ball. Does that make sense? And the closer we can launch to <clears throat> right at this point, the better. Like we, you know, if we can be right on top of it, that would be great because we won't have to do too much adjusting to this. But again, if you're off a little bit, it's it's not going to kill you. So let's, you know, be a little bit more fuel, but nothing great. By the way, that's the kind of thing when we launch in the United States from Florida, you're actually better off launching along the equator, because when you think about it, if you want to put something into an equatorial orbit in the United, if you're launching from the U.S., you have to do a different additional burning of fuel to get there. Because you're not launching from a line that's even with the equator. <laughs> so so they, I think they're, they were building something, I think, in Panama or something like that, or Colombia, that was going to be like a pretty, probably a pretty popular place, if it's not already there, to like launch satellites. All right, in any event, let's go take a look at our satellite contracts. So here's the moon ones that we're not going to do. So then here is, I think this is the big one. Yeah, this is the one that's like 13 million you know meters and so we want the one that's polar yeah, polar orbit and it's only three to two million meters so that's still pretty far away but at the same time it's not it should be i think it's within our range of doing it and we can kind of judge how much fuel we have left when we get done this one right now, how are we doing here? I'm just going to look for ones that say landed orbit. Oh, look, there we go. See, like, Rove Max Model S2. I don't, we'll go, we'll take a look and see if we have Rove Max Model S2. I'm not even sure what that is. But if we have it, we can test it. Yeah, the run test option in the parts context menu when you're on. Well, that's landed. See, that's not the same as at the... No, we want mm -hmm. at the launch pad. Mm -hmm. Never mind. We're not going to do that one. Okay. Now, how are our SETI contracts? Yeah, we have moon flyby, which we're getting geared up to do here. I just want to put this one more satellite into orbit, which will probably be all we do this episode. But in the next episode, I think we're going to look forward to moon flyby of a probe because we should have enough probes up there by this point, right? All right, so let's come in here, get this guy launched. And let's see. So this will be, well, this is sort of, to me, a medium orbit. But we, we will take this guy, low orb sat, load. Now the question is, yeah, do we think we can make it with just these two rockets? Or do you think we should put... Yeah, I think we're going to try it with just these two because we have a good amount of fuel left on those others. Like we barely burned any out of this. We didn't even burn our little Oscar B there very much. Um, if we really wanted to, what we could probably do here, let's be safe. We're going to take this baby plug off and you know what? We need to put these guys, you know, we'll just put them here. Let's take this guy off and I think there's another... Yeah, Oscar B3. So, well, that's kind of a lot of fuel, it looks like, for... Let's see what that does. That gets us up to 4,300. Yeah, you know what? I kinda, I'm kind of, i kind of liking that, though. You know, like, let's put an X so we get two of these. Yeah, let's put these over here. Gives us more room to put stuff, too, doesn't it? Yeah, we can take this guy... I only want one of them. Now, let's see. We got a contract. So, position a brand new satellite. Build a brand new unmanned probe. Reach the destination. Have an accelerometer. What? Okay. If you want an accelerometer. That's a 
science thing, I think. Yeah, this is the seismic accelerometer. I don't know why you would put that on here. We're just putting one, right? Yeah, we can't keep our barometer on this thing, but... Yeah, so we have an accelerometer, maintain stability, reach the destination, designated thing, inclination, 90 degrees. I'm not sure what this longitude of ascending and descending node is, but we'll just go up there and match the trajectory and probably be in good shape. Okay, well, there we go. It's like, I'm going to call it low orb stat, but we'll rename it when we get out there. Can we re... Yeah, all right, so let's... Uh, I'm not even going to save this because, well, you know what, let's call it, yeah, let, let's call it something different because we put different fuel on here. So, oops, what happened there? Okay, it doesn't like that. How about mid orb stat one? <laughs> Probably not the best name in the world, but yeah, let's save mid orb stat one. That'll give us an idea. So I'm considering that kind of a mid-range, you know, to go out to two to three million meters is not far, far away from Kerbin, but it's it's kind of like a middle orbit, in my opinion. Okay, so we should have, should have some extra fuel, even though it cost us extra money. And we can't do SAS. We're doing this. We're going to take up, oh, 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 you know what? Let's look at our... Uh, three one point three five delta tw that's fine especially for a booster stage and oops not this we'll click right there and this is one point six so that that's fine too so we'll set our throttles to two thirds maybe a little more that should be good we can always up and down them if we feel the need okay so hopefully adding that little bit to it doesn't upset the apple cart too much. Let's turn this stuff off, and we're going to try to get... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah, oh, we want this on. Turn this off. And then... Actually, we need to... Before we get too excited, I think we need to fast forward a little bit of time, right? So where are we? Desert launch site. Oh, we're right over here. Uh, we're just... Okay, yeah, we're really... Yeah, see... If I didn't talk so long, we may have been able to do this, but let's let's do 50 times. We got to wait for uh, yeah, let's do 100 times. Yeah, cuz we have to wait until the Kerbal comes around. Let's do 1000 times. And then I'll slow it down to 50 as we get close. All right, we're getting closer. And then we just, right when this, this is the space center right there. I wish there wasn't so much stuff right there so we could see better. Now, the problem is because we're like in follow me mode, it's going to it's gonna keep actually moving us a little bit. So I'm trying to keep this thing where it's, okay, that's, that's close enough. Right there. See, so now we're in line. So if we look, we're on this side of the Kerbal. In order to get lined up with this, we got to burn to the south. Does that make sense? So we're going to have to go up on this nav ball to 180. See, so there's a little north symbol down there. Okay, so burning to the south for a change. All right, I think we're ready. Three, two, one, go. Man, I feel weird burning to the south. So often do we burn to the 90. Let's keep it. You know, strange things happen, I've noticed, when you burn to the south with the orbits. Sometimes. I don't I, I don't know. It, it, it seems like the game, you know, it has like mathematical areas that it's doing its calculations. Okay, this is good. We'll just stay right like right in this ballpark. We don't have that much fuel until we get to the other. other thing so I don't know if I'm gonna hit that prograde in other words because I'm not sure that I how that flight computer works 100% stay, stay up pointing more for me if you could we got to go way out there anyway we're not, we're not 
too worried. Now the only benefit is it's easier to change and make some adjustments when you're lower, right? So we're just going to keep manual control. Burn at 45. Definitely want to go a little bit this way, a little bit more. But this old ball is going to jump in a minute, and Lord knows where it's going to go. You'll see what I mean. Somebody who's more experienced at the game could probably tell us why. Doing pretty well, I think, all in all. See what I mean? I don't know why it does. See, it just jumped all the way over there. Oh, I'm burning pretty. I'm gonna try to get kind of up higher. And I'll stay on this side. When we get to about a hundred, I'll cut this off, and we can do a. And the 102 minutes just gives us some time here to actually place this maneuver. See how we're way off? We're not going straight up and down. So let's add a maneuver, prograde. Oh, slow down a little bit. That's good. And then now what I want to do, let's get this guy going to his node so that he's moving. And what I want to do is see how we're not, see this line, we want to line up with that blue line. So I want to burn, I think, this way, because we're, right, and just try to get that more in line. See that? It's not perfect, but it's closer. I'm just trying to judge as best I can, maybe even a little bit more. Okay, let's zoom out. Yeah, it, it's we still need to do some aligning, but that's it's closer to where we need to be, right? And see, it, it's doing the same thing I was when I made that adjustment. See how it's burning on the other side of this 180 there? All right, so let's do this and then tell this guy to execute. And we're going to need to get ready to stage, probably, anyway. So let's come over to here, and plus we can view our lovely, lovely craft with the sun in the background and pointing down towards the South Pole, I believe, right? Oh, you know what? Let's get some... Uh, oh, we don't have any connection. Yeah, see, we're kind of cheating because we didn't have... I, this is... That's the problem. See, we shouldn't be able to... We shouldn't be able to set this maneuver up unless we have a connection. But yet we can. So this... That's where I got confused. Like, wait a minute. We're not connected. So we just have to... I have to do a better job of remembering to activate that. Good. So we have our seismometer, which isn't usable in space, but hey, we have a seismometer or accelerometer, whatever you call it. I don't know what the difference. I don't know what a seismic stage. Yep. There we go. Not exactly what you would call the perfect eccentric orbit, but we're going to be burning on it anyway. So let's come back into our map mode and yeah so now i don't know of a way that we could set our target to here right so in other words if you look it has this dn and an and if we're at the an or dn if you look there's our thing and see how we're off a little bit well, when, you know, like we would be off from this node here. So we should, well, let's see, where are we coming to next? We're coming to AN, and I think AN's the better one. But if we line these two up, like you should burn, I think it's more fuel efficient to burn here. I don't know if you guys can see this, and I don't want to, I can zoom in a little bit. But I'm going to try to line this up as best I can, looking straight through the AN and the DN, ascending, ascending node and descending node. 
can. See, it's come on. Like the mouse is not a fine enough tool. Yeah, we need to burn a little bit. Let's see. From like right here. All right, I need to burn a little bit this way. I got to zoom back out. And I know you guys probably can't see, but you now we're, and it's actually going to be easier to do this when we're make like a final adjustment on our, our thing, but it costs us a lot less fuel to do it now. Right? So let's execute this order, which is happening in like a minute. So when I made that first adjustment where I pulled the little pink bar over to the side, the little pink symbol triangle, like what we were doing is is lining the two planes. Like if this is a plane, you know, like a flat area all inside of this, like if you like a drum stretched across here, we want these two to these two drums to be like right in line with each other, right? So by burning and moving this top part of this a little bit over this way, see where here is our old one, this will be our new one. Look how that's right in line with this. Now it's not gonna be perfect, but it's a lot cheaper to do it with a smaller orbit, right? So that's why that's why we're doing it now. Yeah, see how we're pulling that over just a little bit more? And that'll save us some fuel in the long run. See, it's taking 59. It's a very difficult, changing that the direction of your travel like that is pretty expensive relative to like prograde and retrograde kind of burns. So anyway, th this should straighten us out a bit. I don't know if it's, I don't think it's perfect, but it, it'll get us closer and we can make some more fine tune adjustments at that point, you know, whenever. All right, so let's let this guy burn, which will be like not very exciting, I don't think. Here, we can even come over here and look at him. See, now we're not, you know, we're going this way, but we burnt to the side there, right? All right, good. So we got. Got that done. You know, I'm going to close this Kerbal alarm clock. All right, so now what we want to do is we want to burn to get our periapsis or our apolapsis where we need them. So where are we? We're down here. So what I want to actually do, and this is not what you would normally do all the time, and you could do it different, but I know that if we burn like opposite this periapsis over here, right? So like if we were to burn in this neighborhood, all right, let me spin it off to the side. We're gonna, ex whenever you burn, you're changing your opposite thing. So I wanna burn until I put my periapsis right on 2.468. So let's go ahead and say burn prograde and we'll extend this out. And for a while it'll be our apolapsis, but so 2.4, and let's do some fine tuning here, right? 6.4, we can turn this down a little bit. 2.468, so that should put us right on there. Now look, we're off a little bit, see? And the reason for that is because when I line these two planes up, they're not exactly on the same exact plane. They're, they're a little bit different. Now when you're rendezvousing with another craft, you, you really should do the same thing but you have this where you can say okay what's my relative inclination to that craft right so in other words you, you could get that information but right now we can't because this isn't a craft and it's, well we can take a look but probes planes bases and yeah, say i don't i don't think there's any yeah, no rovers I mean, stations, and yeah. so there, there's not, this is like rendezvous with a vessel, not with some planned orbit. <laughs> so, okay. Well, let's see. That's only 28 minutes. I don't think it's worth going to do anything else. And plus, the episode's getting a little long in the tooth, in a sense. So let's, let's go ahead and, and tell them to execute this burn. We'll get him to move over. We'll hit node. I like, like I said, I like to get over there before you know, before, especially like, see how long this has taken for him to get over there? Why is it taking so long for you to get over there? Uh, do we, is there something wrong? Let's go back to here. I mean, you have a reaction wheel. Oh, did I not hit the right thing? Oh, 
Oh, no connection. What? Oh, okay, well, good. I'm glad we can't control it with no connection. That's good. That's, well, I mean, not good, but... So, yeah, let's go back to here. And... Well, why aren't you... Oh, you know what? Do we have to... Oh, wait. Uh, we're just spinning, I think. Um, good. This is this is learning. So, yeah, this is activated. This is activated. Do we have to tell this guy to point? How about you point to Kerbin? Or do we want to tell them just to point to like, like part of me saying point to one of these, but what if we, can we just tell it that you need to point to Kerbin? No. All right, well, how about we tell you to point to low orb stat one, low orb stat two. No connection. Let's see, let's go back to here, because it's kind of easier to, yeah, let's close that. Oh, you're just, you're down here, and nobody can see you. Ah, I see. Okay. Well, you're going to pop back out from down there, I hope, and then we can... We can tell you to do this, but this is why this is like a better challenge, right? This is why I wanted to do this because it's like you have to, it gives you that extra having to think ahead. So let's hope that we can, now we should have not dilly dallied and, and I could have, you can tell them to do things and they'll do them when they're out of satellite reach. So let's, let's just speed things up here. Oops, play. Oh, we're going all the way around, aren't we? Oh yeah, we're going the wrong way. You know, we got a connection back. Let's cancel this. We're going to do this the opposite. We don't have to be fast about it, but let's... Yeah, like right in this ballpark. See, I'm, I'm looking through the A and the P there. Yeah, and then see if we burn this guy prograde for a while. That'll take our apoplapsis. And we want it to be what? Three seven five three three six nine three seven five three there we go close enough now can we tell you to execute yes because see we got another signal from here so now that we told him to execute and we can also tell him to go to the node now it's because we came back around here. I don't know if, it, look, we are attached to this satellite too. So I think in order for, well, see, we're not going to have to worry about it so much because it's just because we're so close, right? Like, you know, I don't know what our altitude was right there, but, you know, it's only 99 here. So it's, we just, we just were out of range of all of the satellites, which like I said, is, was kind of a good lesson. So let's, let's speed this guy up now that we should have a, yeah, we'll do 50 times and it should slow us down automatically. Let's get this done before the episode ends. But yeah, that's cool. I'm glad to see that working like it was. Because it, it took me a while. Like at first I was like, what is it going on? Why can I still control this thing? And I'm turning on and off mods and watching other people's videos. And nobody says that much about that, you know? All right, let's speed it up again just to get it. We're going to burn for 19 seconds. So let's leave it a good... We'll slow down when we get to below 30 seconds left. And we got a minute or so. Once I see, yep, there we go. All right, so we should be real close. Yeah, then once we get this guy in, he should be able to speak to somebody somewhere, right? And just sort of help with the whole relay. But I'm not sure. Go to this point because I have orders. 
let's, let's step out and see what he actually ends up doing for us. Sometimes I notice it's not perfect, right? There we go. So what is our app? Yep, 3.75. That's probably going to be close enough for the contract. So now what we need to do is yeah, we'll add a maneuver there, and then we need to take this up to whatever that was. Two, two six four eight two four six eight two four six eight right yeah two four six eight all right we're pretty close let's two no we're going the wrong way go the other way two four six eight there you go close enough execute that if you can Yep, very good. Why don't you travel to your node while you have the chance so we don't get... Yeah, see, now we should be, as we get around to here, like we should still be able to communicate because we're, we're within the range of that ComStat 16. And then, you know, so we should be fine now, now that we're away from the planet further. So let's, uh, let's do a lot of... Well, let's see. How long is it going to take you to do that? Uh, where is your alarm clock? one hour yeah let's go ahead and get this guy in here i was wondering should we go do something else but now let's get this guy done and then we'll have a nice little mini satellite thing so let's do 100 times speed and then we'll we'll do this burn and hopefully that'll get us our contract completed if not we might have to do another burn or two which we may or may not do in this episode and why can't i get into a good position to see what's happening just because you're in a weird place there. I guess I could zoom out, spin around. There you go. So here we are right here. Coming in. Yeah, see how we're still connected like to those satellites. We're, we're, we're connected to many things. And we, yeah, we have a timer, so we should slow down. Now notice how long, like it took us an hour and a half, and this little piece here is going to take a half hour. This is like a much bigger orbit that's going to take us a long time to complete, yeah, especially after we do this burn. See, we're already at three-hour orbit. And by the way, this is when we talked about the dark side calculations. Imagine you know, this guy's moving really slow in this big orbit. It's going to take him a while to get past the Earth or the Kerbal. Yeah, close the alarm. There we go. So now let's fast forward. It's going to be a 30 second burn. So we'll, we'll when we get to about 40 seconds left, we'll we'll stop our fast forwarding. That should give him enough time. There we go. 40 seconds left or so. Yep, 28 seconds. He'll start burning, and we'll see. We'll see if we get oh, we got a milestone. Yeah, 25. 2,500 meters per second. Very good. So a little bit of science, a little more money. Now, can we get this contract completed, please? We're coming up on an hour of recording. Oh, look, we could do science. And we should be able to send science back. Well, let's complete the burn, and then we'll do some science. I like getting science. Oh, what are we not? Is that it? Yep. Okay, glad I noticed, well, yeah, so, you know what, like, I don't know, well, I don't know how much we're going to burn off, but it's certainly not a bad thing that we put the bigger fuel tank on here, if we ever have any future maneuvering, right? I don't know exactly how much we're going to use. We, this is three times as big as the other one, so, let's see. Now, keep in mind that bringing this cost us some more fuel. So it's hard to say that it would have been exactly that. But look, did we get a contract? Yes, we got the contract. So good, that's a good chunk of change. So this is not the perfect orbit, but it was close enough, right? We didn't have to be any closer. So now that we're here, yeah, I think we want to set this guy to the moon. And then this guy doesn't matter really to active target 
right? So whoever's the active target, this guy. Now, and by the way, this is why close that we have like the ability to turn some of this junk off. Say so like, yeah. So this this should just show us like our active connections. So where are you know? And I think once these disappear, it won't even. Yeah, see, so it's showing us the relay bounces. But cool. So we, we have now all of these guys should be pointing towards the MUN. See that? So if we do send a mission on a flyby, you know what I mean? Like no matter where we're at, somebody should be covering us on our trip out there. Cool. All right. Well, we're, we're at the hour mark or so with the recording. Contract complete. 94 thousand very good and uh yeah we can close that there and let's go back like, to the space center and let's just oh no let's go to the tracking station and just want to now that we've spent you know puncher five now by the way has spent over a day out there so probably should have checked on him a little bit sooner but let's go fly him for a second and just see See how they're doing off alone in space. Are they still alive? Yeah, yeah, they look pretty happy about it, which is always good. Dark here, of course, even though now, like, do you like that turn the brightness up? That was a smart YouTuber idea there, I think. Yeah, so we have our solar panels seem to be doing the trick. I mean, we're losing power now, but we're at 99% power. Um, we have our antenna and yeah, they're just in space. By the way, there is a mod that makes the food, what is it, TAC life support, I think it's called. There might be other ones out there, but yeah, the TAC life support's nice. One thing I want to do while we're here, that I, I just remembered that we forgot, is let's add an alarm. Let's go back over to our contract. This this is going to be up in 10 days and 3 hours, right? And then 35 minutes. So let's go here. Just need a 1 there. 10 days, three hours, let's just do it 30 minutes, right? Add an alarm. So that way we kind of keep an eye on how long those guys until they're done, just so we can bring them down. They, they can float around a little extra if we have something else to do in that period of time. Okay, good. Well, good, they're still alive and, and they seem to be doing pretty well. So I don't think we need to worry about them, but we should check on them once in a while, right? Hopefully we'll, sometimes they give you an alarm if things are going badly. Hopefully we'll get one of those alarms. Look, and we got some science. Not quite enough to do too much with, but I have a feeling if we can do our moon flyby in next week's episodes, we'll be in uh, much better shape. So once again, I hope you guys have enjoyed it. Notice that it is dark, so we could still see here. <laughs> I think it's always dark when I'm recording, but I, I've beaten the dark. So anyway. I hope you guys have enjoyed it. I hope you learned a little bit. If you have any questions about the remote tech, I'd be, I'd be happy to try to answer them. Uh, I don't know all the answers, but if you ask me a question that I don't know, I'd, I'd most likely be curious to try to figure it out if I can. So, so please feel free to post in the comments. All right, thanks, guys. I hope you have a good day. Take care of yourselves.